the news is, by definition, whatever is new. So it's no surprise that the coverage of Pope Francis' first two weeks has tended to emphasize what distinguishes him from his predecessor. Uh, the most evident difference is, of course, uh, Pope Francis's outgoing, spontaneous, informal uh, style, which stands in such a contrast to the more reserved, shy, uh, introverted personality of Pope Benedict. Given that, it's easy to miss the important continuities between the two popes, uh, especially with regard to some of the themes that have already emerged as real priorities for Pope Francis. Pope Francis has already made it clear, starting with his decision to name himself after St. Francis of Assisi, that he wants the church to be close to the poor. And uh, that message resonates especially uh, in his case because he comes to the papacy with uh, decades of experience as a pastor in a large urban diocese uh, where he was able to have direct contact with the most marginalized members of society. Benedict was a theologian and a longtime professor, but as Pope, he compiled a substantial body of, of teaching on social and economic issues. He was notably unsparing in his criticism of the injustices of the globalized economy. At the same time, both Benedict and Francis made it clear a long time ago that the way to remedy those injustices is never to subordinate the faith to Marxism or other worldly ideologies, as so many figures in the church, uh, especially in Latin America, have found so tempting over the years. Pope Francis seems to be very well received by the church's partners in ecumenical dialogue. Uh, the Orthodox Patriarch of Constantinople even attended his mass of inauguration, which was a historic first. But relations between Rome and the Orthodox were never better than under Benedict, to the point that by the end of his pontificate, a meeting between the Pope and the Patriarch of Moscow had come to seem a realistic prospect. So Francis's work for Christian unity will be building on that. Many have been struck by Pope Francis' expressions of uh, respect and openness to people of no religion at all. But it was Benedict in 2011 who invited agnostic seekers of truth uh, to the CZ interfaith meetings for the first time. So it shouldn't have surprised us that Francis, when he warned diplomats from around the world about the greatest threats to peace, uh, chose to quote what are probably the single most famous words uttered by his predecessor, Benedict's denunciation of the dictatorship of relativism. Dictatura del relativismo. So as we watch Francis's pontificate unfold, we need to remember that there is far more uniting these two men than separating them in all the areas that matter most.